Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to be looking at comparing outcomes, and actually we're going to see why comparing outcomes is a fairly difficult thing to do in our line of work. And to skip ahead to the bottom line here, because expected utilities can be transformed, as we've seen in a previous video, comparing outcomes using the numerical payoffs between players doesn't really make very much sense. And as a result, we're stuck using minimalist comparisons like Pareto efficiency and qualitative measures to stand in and do that job for us. Now, what you see on the screen might not be exactly clear, so I'm going to go over a bunch of examples, and that should clarify things greatly for you. Everything should make perfect sense by the time I'm done with this video, hopefully at least. So this is the original game of Matching Pennies, where each of these players' payoffs are either ones or negative ones. And we see here that, well, maybe one way of looking at uh, social optimality of, of these outcomes is to add up the expected utilities in each of the outcomes and see what it sums up to. So. It's uh, in this heads heads outcome box, so you would add up one plus negative one, that equals zero, and you do that all the way around. And if you did that, you would get something that looks like this. It's just zeros all the way around. So now you might be tempted to claim that each of these outcomes is, is neutral, it doesn't really matter, there is no one, or no socially optimal outcome, everything is, is equally as good. But you could also draw up matching pennies like this. We've seen that expected uh, utilities can be transformed in any positive linear transformation. Here I've just multiplied all of player 1's utilities by 10, leaving player 2's exactly the same as before. And we know that when you do positive linear transformations of expected utilities, you get an equivalent game. So this game is equivalent to the one that we just looked at where there was just 1's, no 10's. Yet if we tried adding up these outcomes here, what do we get? Well, we get 9 and 9 in heads, heads, and tails, tails, and negative 9 elsewhere. So now you might want to make the claim that the top left and bottom right outcomes are both good and the other two are bad. But we could also draw up the game like this. So now this is a third way of drawing it up, where I've left player 1's payoffs the same as in the original game, but now I've transformed player 2's payoffs by multiplying each of them by 10. Now if we add things up, we get negative 9 and negative 9 in heads, heads, tails, tails, and positive 9 elsewhere, which translates to bad, bad in heads, heads, tails, tails, and uh, good elsewhere. So this is pretty problematic, you, you should be able to, to reason out yourself here, because we have three equivalent games, and we have three different social optimality outcomes for each of those outcomes. Each of those outcomes, whether it's heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, or tails, tails, in one of these games, it's a good outcome, in one of these games, it's a bad outcome, and in one of these games, it's a neutral outcome. So that doesn't really make very much sense if these things are supposed to be equivalent games. And so you might be wondering, is something broken here? And well, kind of, it, something might actually be uh, a problem here. And the basic issue here is that we can't use expected utilities to compare the social optimality of particular outcomes in the manner that we are doing it. We can't just add things up and hope to get some sort of something uh, sensible out of that. And so as a result, we have to go over other things or you have to use other sort of social optimality functions in order to be able to make these sorts of comparisons. And one of them is called Pareto optimality. And we say that an outcome is Pareto optimal if there is no outcome that makes at least one player better off without making any player worse off. We could also call this Pareto efficiency. And so if an outcome is not Pareto optimal, it's Pareto inefficient. So an example here is from the Prisoner's Dilemma. We saw that the unique equilibrium to this game is defect-defect because defect dominates cooperate for both players. And given that, well, you get this negative five, negative five outcome here. But you'll see that this is inefficient, pareto speaking, uh, compared to the cooperate, cooperate outcome because each of these guys is better off if they could play this outcome instead. If they could somehow reach the cooperate, cooperate outcome, each of them would be better off than this outcome. So this would be a Pareto inefficient outcome. And that's sort of the tragedy of the prisoner's dilemma is that there's this other outcome here, the cooperate cooperate outcome that both players would like to be able to get to but can't because uh, defect strictly dominates cooperate for both of them. So this outcome is unsustainable. Now we've also seen it in the stag hunt. Well, in the stag hunt, we had two uh, equilibria. There was the stag-stag equilibria and a hare-hare equilibria. I'm just gonna ignore the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium for the time being here. This outcome here is obviously Pareto inefficient because we could be playing this outcome here and we would be both be getting more meat out of this game. There would be a, a three here waiting for both of us, which is better than this one here for both of us. So this would be a Pareto inefficient outcome. This would be a Pareto efficient outcome. And we've seen this another place here. This was a game where we looked at the, where there was infinitely many equilibria. In this game, player two had left dominate right and that left player one with up left and down left, both as pure strategy Nash equilibria. And we see that in this game, 
left down or down left is Pareto efficient, whereas up left is not. Because if we were playing this equilibrium here, well, player one would be just as well off as if they were playing this one here, because this two is the same. But in this case for player two, player two gets a worse outcome for this one than she does for this one. So this outcome here is Pareto efficient, inefficient, I should say. This one is Pareto efficient or Pareto optimal. So we might think that, as I've said in the past, a Pareto inefficient outcome is, is fairly bizarre if there's another equilibrium that has Pareto efficiency. So if we were playing this one, we might comment that this is a strange equilibrium to play, or in the stag hunt, we've talked about that in the past, that this is a strange equilibrium to play versus this, and so forth. You get the idea. That that's a pretty good and powerful tool to use because it's rigorously defined, and you'll see Pareto optimality talked about all the time. So it's pretty important for you to know and and get a good feel for it, which is why we're growing it over it, going over it a second time here. Uh, but there's another way we can measure things. We can use qualitative measures, and I've just listed here to use your brain on this sort of thing. So to give you an example here, because we haven't seen something like this before. Uh, this is called the Hawk Dove game. We haven't touched this in the past, like I've said. Basically, the idea here is that you either choose a hawk, which is warlike, or you choose a dove, which is peace-like, and you get an outcome that corresponds to those uh, strategies that you selected. So if both of us play hawk, then we end up in a war outcome. If both of us play dove, then we end up in a peace outcome. And if one of us plays hawk and the other one plays dove, the person who plays hawk gets to essentially abuse the dove here. And What's a qualitative measure here? Well, what do you think is a good outcome here versus a bad outcome? Well, it's pretty clear I think a peaceful outcome is better than the rest of these outcomes. So I'm basically appealing to your emotions here that peace is just sounds a lot nicer than war or oppression. And we would think that this is actually socially optimal in comparison to oppression or war. Now, qualitative measures can cause problems because if you're not really careful about how you're using it and there's not something obvious like war or peace as there was in the hawk dove game it's a little bit questionable about you know well is this actually efficient or is this actually socially optimal or what and the reason for that is because this is not a rigorous measurement so pareto optimality has a rigorous definition it's precise it is an objective measurement of efficiency pareto optimality is an objective measure of efficiency or optimality, whereas qualitative measures such as, I like think peace is better than war, as in the case here, that's a subjective thing to say. Someone might dispute that. So unless you have something really firm that people would be crazy or people would be very unlikely to say that, well, you know, you're wrong about this. For example, war is better than peace. Very few people would say that you're gonna run into problems. So this is a good example of when it works, but if you're talking about how firms were profiting against each other, if we were looking at a game between two firms producing products and trying to profit as much as possible, well, that becomes really dicey in how you use a qualitative measure to decide what is socially optimal out of that. So you really gotta be careful, as I said. And just to reiterate things to, to wrap this video up here, the bottom line of the video was that because expected utilities can't be transformed, comparing these numerical payoffs by just adding them up doesn't really make sense. And so we have to use other sorts of measurements, uh, whether it's qualitative or using Pareto efficiency in order to do that sort of thing. I hope you learned something out of this video. We'll see you next time.